Three, two, one. Ah, hello, uh, Lindsay Price here. Hello, Facebook Live. Um, oh, we're doing something new and fun uh, today, and uh, we just hope that it all works out. Um, I am. Um, I'm going to be talking to somebody, which is very exciting, and that they're not going to be beside me. So we're going to just see if this all works out. We are uh, talking today um, um, with author Stephen Stack about uh, his uh, new play in our catalog, Horror Movie 101, Failing Can Be Deadly. Uh, he has uh, many plays in our catalog, but that's what we're going to talk about. So, hello, Stephen. Hello, Lindsay. How are you? I am awesome. Okay, so tell everybody uh, where in the world you are right now, generally and then specifically. Okay, generally, I am in Wisconsin. Specifically, I'm in the library in Mount Horeb because our internet is quite awful in the cabin in the woods that we live in. So, I'm in a library room right now. Yeah, well, you go the distance. When uh, when we asked you to uh, to come and do this with us, you know, you 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 trekked, you trekked from the woods to the library. We appreciate that. Hey, no um, problem. Okay. What's that? Oh, no problem. I'm here for you. Perfect. Oh, you always are. You always are, Stephen. You've been um, a theater folk playwright. I can't remember. Like it's been it's at least seven years, five years, it's something like about that. Seventy-four yeah, years. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, some of the other great plays that Stephen has with us are um, uh, She Wrote, Died, Then Wrote Some More. Um, we also have The Bottom of the Lake, um, which is a really interesting one because uh, it really connects to the whole theme of horror that we are talking about today. Horror Movie 101. I love that Stephen um, takes horror and puts it into plays. So tell me where... Where does this uh, horror movie 101, let's start with the title, where did it come from? Well, it came from the fact that uh, I love horror movies, and I'm obsessed with the fact that characters in horror movies always make the wrong decision. Every single time when they're faced with a chance to make the right decision, they look at that right decision and go, no, I'm going to do the opposite of that. And it's fascinated me. So when uh, at the studio I work at, Forte Studio, we were doing a Halloween show and they needed some scenes. I was thinking, all right, this is the perfect time. So I thought about all the bad decisions that people can make in horror movies. And I constructed a play around five scenes. So they all connected where they made bad decisions. And sometimes the bad decisions are funny. Sometimes they're sad. And then sometimes they're just plain out scary and awful. Um, well, that encom encompasses everything that uh, we like about uh, Horror Movie 101 and why it's in our catalog. One, it could be done with a full class because you've got your five scenes. Um, and while the stories interact, the characters don't um, overlap. So right. that, that's something that you can have a whole class do. Um, so, uh, uh, so it's a great uh, ensemble piece. Two, um, it has that wonderful combination of character um, and uh, and which sometimes they and they do the wrong thing, which I think that um, we or sometimes we get away from. You know, we want everybody wants to be uh, you know pretty and perfect, and it's like it's way more interesting to watch characters be um, completely flawed and open the door when they're not supposed to and pick up the girl on the side of the road when they're not supposed to. And um, everyone knows haunted houses are a bad idea. So, uh, and, um, yeah. and, and also having that little bit of um, not just horror, but there's some heart here and some, and I love the idea that some of them end sad and some of them end um, plain old horror. So it's great. Uh, well, yeah, and, uh, well, yeah. Well, one thing I like in when I do like scary things I always like men like mixing in the heart and the humor because really that's the way life is. Like throughout your day, you have moments of happiness, you have moments where things go wrong and we just bump up the stakes more. And uh, that's just what I identify with in stories. Um, and do like in the bottom of the lake, it's the same way. There's a lot of comedy in it, but then there's sadness and darkness in it too. And horror movie 101 has one of my favorite scenes, the one because when they're faced with that decision they have to make, it's devastating in the end, and it's a different kind of fear. Yes, the one is uh, the one takes place in a haunted house, 
And um, well, you're going to have to read the play to figure out what the one is and what that means. And there is a link to Horror Movie 101 um, in the description. And if you are watching this on uh, Facebook and you can uh, throw in comments in the links, um, we're doing this in a different platform. So um, I'm just going to assume that you can throw comments in uh, underneath the, uh, the video as well. Um, what's your, uh, what is your favorite uh, moment for a character? What is your favorite character trait um, that you like to see? Uh, and what would you, what horror story would you like to see turned into a play? Because uh, if anyone could write it, Stephen could write it. Okay, so let's talk about production. Let's talk about what it means to um, produce a scary play. Because a scary, the whole notion of a scary movie is that it relies a lot on the camera. And uh, we don't have that option in um, a, 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 a play, even though I, uh, I read lots of student plays where there are jump cuts galore and it's like, this cannot happen. Um, so how do you maintain the, the genre when uh, you are working with the stage? Well, the main thing I focus on is that it's not about the fright at all. The characters happen to be in a situation that's scary, but the, the truth of it is that the characters have to respond to it. And that's the main thing because the humor comes from the situation and their honest responses. So when I directed Horror Movie 101, we spent so much time on internalizing the character bios because in the end, the characters don't know they're making a bad decision. They respond honestly doing what they think is right. And so the fear comes from that. It's just like comedy. Like, you know, when you're playing a comedy, the characters don't think they're funny. They're playing the truth, and it just happens to be funny. Um, and that's really what I stress is just the truth, the honesty of the scene, even in the comedies. Um, with the one, we spent so much time creating that bond between the characters and where they would experience a loss if something, you know, happens. Um, and that's what it is, because you don't try to be scary. You let the, the story, the scares come from the story, not the other way around. Well, and isn't that what happens in in, in movies, uh, horror movies, a lot? The ones that um, manufacture the scare, you know, with the jump cut and the, the jump scare and the music, it, it tells you um, here's the point where you're supposed to be afraid. And I really like that notion you said about don't focus on the scare, focus on the characters. Uh, and mm -hmm. there are lots of characters in horror movie 101 who aren't human. I don't think that's a spoiler to say that uh, you know if you're dealing with mm -hmm. a horror horror play, horror play, um, that, uh, you know, you've got, we've got characters who are um, uh, risen from the dead. We have characters, we have the famous hook hand in a very interesting light. And those characters especially should get um, character profiles, right? And they should be the ones, they should have as, as full a character life um, as possible so that they um, are A, they're more interesting to play but B, they're going to be something that an audience can connect to. Well, yeah, one of the things we did, like when we just performed at the Bartell Theater in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, is that we spent uh, like three days working on character bios. And then like they did the individual bios where they fleshed out their characters. And then they spent three hours talking to everyone in their plays and in all the other scenes to form that connection of how they how long they've been friends. How do they feel about one another? And it's fan first of all, it's a fantastic acting, acting exercise because they loved it. And they developed, like, in the one, there's a relationship that grew so much because they had this elaborate backstory. So you felt the heart that happened with it. And it was awesome to watch and just see their excitement with it. Oh, I can imagine. Now, what about technical elements? You know, it's, again, that's something that in a horror movie is uh, that they uh, go full full on with, you know, in terms of um, and sound and costume and, uh, of course, gory makeup. Well, how did you, how did you, when you were directing um, Horror Movie 101, um, what technical elements did you include? Well, first of all, when I usually do it, the, the way the camps I work in the studio, we don't actually have a lot of money. So basically when I write, I go, okay, well, how can we do this and focus on the acting and like some basic lights and stuff like that. So we spent, um, we spent some time with the makeup, that was our focus, and the lights where they would be dim and things like that. Um, but we also use one thing that's free is silence and allowing the actors to play the silence and let a moment just take over. Because I have always thought it's one of the reasons why like scary books don't always make great movies 
Because when you're reading a book, you can create it so much better in your head than they can on screen. And on stage, sometimes it's what you suggest happens and you don't show it that's so much scarier because they're, they're seeing, they know what's happening in their, the audience knows what's happening in their brain and they're terrified by it. So it's just like with certain murder, you know, deaths that happen, not murders necessarily, but could be, but certain deaths, it's better that we go, okay, they're totally going to die, but they don't see it because that's where the fear comes in because they can imagine it way better in their brain. I love that idea. And I think we need to, you know, we need to put that on a, on a embroider it on a tea towel. We need to put it on a poster is that the thing that the, the best thing that is free is silence. Um, yeah, I think that yeah. applies for, I think that applies for every, that every, every genre, you know, whether it's comedy or drama or horror in this case is that mm -hmm. silence is, uh, can be your best friend. Oh yeah. I, and yeah. for most of my plays, I spend so much time writing in silences and the actors I work with, they really, year after year, they start to get used to playing the silences and they really get the timing of how long a silence should last. And it's cool to see that growth because I'm obsessed with it. I think dialogue is overrated and I'm just way obsessed with silences. <laughs> I, am, I am with you 100%. Uh, I wrote, uh, I, have a, I have a play which was all about the pause. And I actually spent a lot of time going, this pause is 10 seconds count to 10 <laughs> in your head know what you're doing don't just count to 10 this this pause is three seconds this pause is just a blip mm -hmm. and and just about how um because then because then when you're in the pause and i think this is especially important for horror because in the mm -hmm. silent your audience becomes part of the of the of the moment because they are silent too they're waiting so then they're then they're part of the scene Oh, I have to tell you, there was one in that performance of the Bartell for one scene. I'm not going to say which one it was, but there was this moment as the, the climax of the scene happened that you could, I was in the back running the sound and you could see the audience leaning in up to like the edge of their seat. And when it ended, there was a gasp and they were just devastated with what happened. It was awesome to watch. <laughs> oh, see, and that's the, that is the, isn't that the experience of a horror movie is that you're 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 on the edge of your seat and you want to be scared and you're you're just you're having that moment and um what a what a great theatrical way to uh to incorporate that same tension um without any film techniques right and so much it, and so much it comes from especially with live theater is that connection because the actors had connected with one another and then they connected with the scripts there that opened up the gate and allowed the audience to walk right in there and connect with everything that was happening. And I mean, cause it was a high school audience of like 240 people and they got into that world and they forgot the whole outside world and felt it because the actors had connected with them, each other and the script. So the audience could connect with the story. So it was really cool to watch. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, uh, so as we uh, as we wrap up here, and uh, I think that we've got we've hit a really a couple of really interesting points, just in terms of um, whether you're directing horror movie one hundred and one, failing can be deadly, or whether you are using pauses in your in whatever play that you are doing. Just that with the with with this genre um, uh, and this particular play that we're looking at, you want to make sure that you are uh, using the um, that you're using character development, um, that when it comes to technique, um, that you are using the silence, the silence is your best friend, that that is the best um, uh, tension element. Um, can you think of one more, if you had to give one more piece of advice for a director uh, directing a horror play or a horror movie 101, what piece of advice would that be? I would say my biggest piece of advice is find the truth of the characters and the story. Forget that it's scary at all. It doesn't matter. It'll be scary regardless, or it'll be sad. It's to have every character find the truth of their character. Why they, what's their why, is what I always talk to my actors. Find your why. And if all the actors find their why, then you've got the story. And it works. Oh, 
awesome. I love that. Find your why. Um, uh, as always, it's been a it's a pleasure talking to you, Stephen. And uh, and so we have got as our feature play this month, horror movie one oh one. Failing can be deadly. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Hey, thank you. This is uh, fun. Yeah, it's awesome. So I hope that this uh, worked out on uh, your end if you're watching it. Again, if uh, you have a, a character um, uh, that you think should be made into a, a horror movie, you know, throw that down in the comments. What are your other favorite horror plays have you seen um, or you would want to see? What is a great story that you think would make a great play given what we've talked about today um, in terms of uh, character, um, characters making bad decisions. What a wonderful way to encapsulize what a horror character does and what a perfect thing to put on stage. Um, and uh, you can read sample pages in the description of a Horror Movie 101 um, in the link. And thank you all and have a wonderful night.